Welcome back to Roscommon Acres, very nearly nowhere. It's been a while since we posted our last video about our first ABC aquaponics system. And here's the update. This is Power Baby, if you remember a year ago. We had no lights, no plants, and the water was clear. The last year has been a, quite a learning experience. Uh, the first learning experience was it will take six to nine months to get your water conditioned for the fish. We bought a hundred catfish, we put them in all five tanks, spread them out, and we pretty much lost, oh, 75 of them. Then we went ahead and bought some bluegill later in the season when the water had uh, been cycling a little more, and once again we lost about 80 of those, if not all of them by now because uh, they're just not as hardy as the catfish. However, all the catfish that went into winter survived the winter, which is great news for us. They all started at about two inches. And as you can see now, they've grown. Uh, you can see the goldfish in there as well. We got a couple of bluegill. And my son even went out to the pond by uh, Grandpa's place and did some uh, netting and uh, threw some fish in here, but I think they became food. And there's a handful of food for them. Uh, in about three weeks, we're going to get another 100 fish. We're going to put 25 on the outer two tanks each. Well, each tank. <laughs> Do the math. Uh, some of the problems we had was we first almost made a really, really, really expensive mistake. Uh, one of the reasons we did the aquaponic system inside is because we're in Nebraska. Uh, we don't heat the garage, but we would like to extend the growing season. Today, outside right now, is getting down to 30 degrees in April. Um, what we did was we kept the systems running late into October, early November, and the bed, two of the beds were just covered with lettuce. And we thought we'd just keep that going. Uh, but what happened was the ice started to build up. And luckily we came out one morning and we saw like 200 gallons of icy water on the floor and I thought one of the tanks burst. But what actually happened was uh, it had gotten so cold that it made a sheet layer of ice on the top and it fell out the back and that clued us in we need to shut these down. Uh, good reason, good, <laughs> good idea to shut them down because these all became solid blocks of ice shortly thereafter and if I had kept the pumps in there I don't think it would have been too good for them. What we did do though was we took the fish from the outer four tanks and put them in the center tank and we bought a heater, just a regular old heater, um, to keep it going. And I don't have it here to show everyone. But within a day, in the middle of November, it had uh, uh, de-iced the tank. So we kept this middle tank running. Uh, one of the cool things uh, we did in January was plant this little piece of celery. Uh, I don't know how it's going to go, um, if we're going to get real big stalks, but this has been growing since uh, January. It's been very cold, and it actually came from just a root bulb. Over here we have two leeks. This leek is actually starting to take off. I've been told that they're uh, slow growers, so we'll see how that goes. Um, like we said in our last video, this is not probably the most efficient way to do aquaponics. You've got to do what works for you. And uh, getting the heat on that tank was a little more expensive. We didn't get anything this winter because we're just getting the system uh, started up. One of the problems we did find with the system is the water level. And I think one of the things you might want to think about, I followed the instructions on the video 
and I made, hope the dog don't drink me tea, if you can see, I made these holes uh, as the video instructed, and what I think I did, I have too many holes and the water comes out too quick, it raises the water level up too much. So maybe if you go every second, uh, you won't have the high water issues that we current, sort of currently have. The other issue I knew I was having water issues with was this. This was about the original size of the stop in the middle, which regulates the water level. As it rises up, it goes down, and that sets your water level there. Um, because the water wasn't draining, I thought these were cut too high, and I actually cut it quite a bit off. This was not my issue, uh, having the height here. What was my issue was, when you put the holes, oh, it's starting up, cool. It's so peaceful in here when it starts, but I might have to talk a little louder. Um, when you put the gravel around, and you have the small holes here, I think that's a quarter inch bit, which was the translation from Australia to metric to whatever they use over here. <laughs> um, the water wasn't getting out fast enough, and when I put the gravel in, it stopped it. So what I did was, I moved all the gravel back, and about every second one I put in uh, an inch hole. And then on the bottom of the... On the bottom, I also did a bigger hole. So now the water is actually flowing a lot easier out of the center of the system. So if you do less here and bigger holes, you might not have uh, issues. You'll see here, this bed has uh, uh, not as much rock in it as it should. We had some uh, mold issues, uh, that, so we took some out. But we just planted about 10 minutes ago, uh, transplanted these herbs. If you want to go back and take a look at it. So, um, what we have right now is about Ooh, a week ago, two weeks, it was actually a week ago, it took us about, what, about two minutes a tank to plant these tanks. What we did was we got lettuce and we just sprinkled it over and as you can see within a week we're having a full tank of lettuce here. We got a full tank here of lettuce coming up. These chives in the background, they were actually from last year. And once the weather uh, started to turn from the minus 20 wind and so forth, it's just taken off. One of the things I like about our light system, which we didn't have in our last uh, video, is I hooked them on the chains. Uh, the chives are chasing the light, so that's why I got one side higher and the other side lower. I had, we originally had one light per tank, but it was only giving a strip of light. When we put two per tank, it helped cover the light here, and then uh, some of the overlapping light helps each tank. Like I said, it's probably not the most efficient use of energy, but you just gotta work with what you have. Uh, where you're at. And this is our last bed, and the lettuce is coming up here as well. And we got different styles. Which one's this one? This one is lettuce something. Outrageous. Outrageous. This one is uh, Siberian kale. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other issues we've had. Uh, one of the issues we had in the tank is a uh, th certain three-year-old loves to overfeed the fish. <laughs> but, uh, um, 
We're just really excited about this. It's uh, nice to see someone up and running. Uh, hopefully, once again, would be an encouragement for you to try it for yourself. Uh, from my last video, I still actually have the number 16 that my friend has not come and gotten. <laughs> so I'm waiting for him. Uh, this is just a really neat. And uh, it's, it's the first project that uh, I got really excited about uh, over the last three, four years. And I know there's more information and lessons we have learned, but I cannot think of them. But hopefully in a couple of weeks, we'll come out and take another video uh, after we've got the fish in the tanks and we can see the lettuce come up a little more. So we appreciate you uh, coming by. Uh, got me tea. Don't have any bickies though. Need some bickies. Uh, yeah. How do you end the video? Say goodbye. <laughs>